Hi everyone, this is Tavid Nasir, welcoming you to another episode of Leadership Biz Cafe, brought to you by Tavid Nasir Leadership, our leadership firm that offers virtual and in-person leadership keynotes and workshops. We've been doing more virtual keynotes lately, and it's been wonderful to see the feedback we're getting about these sessions and the kinds of insights I share on how to improve the way you lead. So if you'd like to learn more about my speaking work and what we can offer to your organization, as well as to check out my award-winning leadership blog, visit our company's website at tanvinasir.com. And with that, let's warm up the espresso machine and brew up another leadership espresso shot. If you've ever attended one of my leadership keynotes or workshops, either in person or more recently online as part of a virtual conference event, I'm sure you've noticed how much I enjoy using stories to help illustrate an idea or insight that will help improve your leadership skills. So for this leadership espresso shot, I thought I'd share a personal story about the experiences of my oldest daughter and what we could learn from it about how we deal with mistakes that happen under our leadership. When my daughter was in grade five, I remember her coming home from school one day with a bit of a dilemma. She got back her latest math assignment and noticed that her teacher had marked one of the problems she had solved correctly as incorrect. She showed me her assignment, and I could see that she was right about her teacher making a mistake in how she marked her assignment. So I told my daughter that all she had to do was point out this mistake to her teacher and she would correct the grade she got. But this is where my daughter told me of her dilemma. She didn't feel comfortable telling her teacher she had made a mistake and asked if I could bring it up instead. Now, my daughter had a really good rapport with this teacher, so I couldn't understand why she was reluctant to do this herself. As we talked some more, it became clear that her reluctance came from feeling uncomfortable with having to tell her teacher that she had made a mistake in marking her assignment. To help encourage my daughter to deal with this herself, I made her this deal, that she try to talk to her teacher about this error, and if she finds herself struggling, she could give her teacher a note I'll write to explain what we discussed. Well, she wasn't exactly thrilled with my suggestion, but she agreed to give it a try. Of course, it's not just children who can struggle with having to point out mistakes being made by others. Employees can also feel uncomfortable bringing attention to mistakes they see being made, particularly if those mistakes are being made by someone in a position of authority. But this is where leaders can make a difference by creating an environment where their employees are encouraged to bring attention to those mistakes that inevitably occur regardless of whose actions were responsible for creating the problem. To help you determine whether you've created such an environment for your employees, I'd like to share with you three questions you should ask yourself to determine how well you manage mistakes. The first question is, do my employees feel safe bringing problems or mistakes to my attention? Now, this might sound a bit dramatic, but what this comes down to is the level of trust and respect you foster through your leadership. Trust in that your employees know they can bring up these mistakes without fear of reprisals, recrimination, or other negative outcomes. And respect in that they know they will be treated with civility instead of being mocked or belittled for bringing attention to this mistake. I remember working at one place where it was common knowledge that you had to gauge the boss's mood before bringing any mistakes to his attention. If he was in the right mood, he'd be willing to help you fix the problem by providing the necessary resources. Otherwise, his focus would be on finding ways to blame the mistake on you, given that you're the one bringing it up. I'm sure it'd come as little surprise that we spent more time putting out fires than we did preventing them given how it wasn't worth the tongue-lashing we'd receive for pointing out problems before they became serious. That's why it's important that you create an environment where your employees feel comfortable pointing out mistakes, even if the person making them is you. The second question you need to ask yourself is, do I acknowledge my employees' efforts to bring these mistakes to my attention? Let's face it. Whether you're on the delivering or receiving end, it's hard to deal with discussions about a mistake or failure that's happened. 
That's why it's important that leaders express their appreciation to their employees for having both the willingness and the courage to bring mistakes to their attention. By being appreciative when your employees draw attention to mistakes that have been made, you'll be encouraging your employees not to ignore mistakes when they happen, but to instead reach out to get help to try and fix the problem. It also shows them that you care about what they have to say and appreciate their input. And finally, the third question you need to ask yourself is, are your actions focused on doing right or on being right? Now, I'm sure most of you would say that you are driven to do the right thing. However, I want you to look back on some of the past disagreements you had with some of your employees. Was the source of the disagreement the result of you wanting to do right by your employee? Or was it more a matter of wanting to be seen as being right? Going back to my daughter's math assignment, her focus when discussing this problem was not trying to prove that she was right. Instead, she was trying to figure out what was the best way to tell her teacher she had made a mistake marking her assignment. In other words, her goal wasn't simply to get credit for having the right answer, but to understand how she could discuss the situation with her teacher to correct the mistake. Remember that being a good leader doesn't mean you're always right. Rather, it's about being committed to doing what's right. By asking yourself these three questions, you'll improve your self-awareness about the kind of environment you're promoting in your workplace and whether you are, in fact, handling those inevitable mistakes that arise correctly. As for my daughter, the next day when she came back from school, I asked her how it went. She told me that she talked with her teacher about her assignment and pointed out the mistake her teacher had made marking her assignment. Her teacher not only acknowledged her mistake, but she told my daughter how impressed she was with my daughter for catching this mistake and bringing it to her attention. Her teacher then asked the rest of the class to check their assignments to make sure she hadn't marked their answer incorrectly for the same question. Before heading off to do her homework, my daughter reached into her knapsack and pulled out my note, still neatly folded, and said, Here, Papa. Turns out I didn't need this after all. What more can I say after that than we've reached the end of yet another cup of Leadership Espresso Shot? As I said at the start of this Leadership Espresso Shot, I really do enjoy using the storytelling communication technique to help impart insights or strategies to help improve the way you lead. And if you've been wondering while listening to this episode how you can do the same, I'd invite you to check out episode number 46 of our podcast where I share three keys to effective storytelling in that edition of my Leadership Espresso Shot series. And it's these kinds of insights and observations that I'm happy to provide your organization through a leadership keynote or training workshop, either virtually or in person. As I mentioned at the start of this episode, I've been doing more virtual keynotes lately, so if you're interested in learning more about my speaking work, please do drop me a line through our contact form at tanvinnasir.com. Now, if you enjoyed this or previous episodes of my leadership podcast, I do have a favor to ask of you. I'd appreciate it if you could share my podcast with anyone in your network you know who would also enjoy listening to my show. The easiest way to do this is to simply share a link to my show's podcast page at tavernasir.com slash LBC. On our podcast page, you can listen to every episode of our show as well as get links to subscribe to my podcast on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and Google Podcasts so you can catch our latest episodes as soon as they're released. And as I mentioned in our last episode, our show is also now available on Deezer as well. So we're not only working at bringing you more episodes, but we're also expanding our reach and presence for where you can listen to my show. And with that, I'm Tammy Nasir, and you've been listening to Leadership Biz Cafe. Leadership Biz Cafe.